Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey and today I am doing the writing and makeup tag. I wanted to do this video for a very long time, over a year now um, basically, but when Alexa Dunn, who is the creator of this tag, created this tag, I had just done the books and makeup <laughs> tag and I thought I probably shouldn't be doing those two so close together, but it's been a year and now I feel like I can finally do this tag. So I'm very very excited to um, get into it. I got fresh face. I'm a little red because I just finished washing my face before I sat down to do this. Um, but let's just jump right in. The first question is primer. Uh, what is your brainstorming process like and what is a tip that you have for brainstorming? I don't really use primer. Um, what I put on my face just before I sat down was uh, this daily moisturizer. It's really basic. This is like the drugstore version. I got it at Walgreens. I had really bad skin at the end of last year. Kind of from the summer of last year to the end of the year, I just like did not understand why I was having such bad skin and why I was breaking out all the time and I was getting like acne like below my chin which I never used to get. I never used to get it on my neck and stuff so I finally went to the dermatologist in like October of last year because I was just like getting really embarrassed. It was really affecting my confidence and because especially because like I'm an adult now so I'm like I wash my face every day so I know that you know this acne isn't because of just not watching my face. So I went to the dermatologist and he really helped me like kind of create a skincare routine which is like five different products I use on my face. I also got on two um, prescriptions, one was a pill, one was a cream that I use every night and it really has improved my skin. Like I'm not embarrassed to be talking right now at a camera with absolutely nothing on my face um, but like six months ago I would have been. I now like can leave the house, go to the grocery store with no makeup on. Back last year I wasn't able to do that because I was just like so self-conscious about what my face looked like. That was kind of a long discussion about skincare. Brainstorming. Um, I love pre-writing which is what I consider brainstorming. I do a lot of pre-writing before I actually start writing the book and I think my favorite brainstorming tip is to just before you even like consider outlining before any of that and you're just trying to figure out if this is a sustainable story for an entire novel just go to grab a notebook and just write everything that you're thinking about that you want to include in this book. I do that with every project that I start and I love doing this process because it's like the discovery of what I kind of want the story to be, what the characters are, romantic subplots, all these things. I put them all in a stream of conscious sort of brain dump and I often ask questions while I'm writing and answer them while I'm writing them. It's just a lot of fun. I, that's my favorite part of brainstorming. The second question is about foundation and the question is are you a gardener or an architect? Do you outline or don't you? Fun fact about foundation, I don't use it anymore so I actually am not going to be putting foundation on my face. I don't know like after I started having the skin issues I just first I stopped using it because I'm like is it because of the foundation that's giving me this but that was really wasn't the case. Now I'm just used to not using it so I just haven't been using it. To answer the question, the writing question related to this topic, um, I am, I do consider myself an outliner however I don't really like either of those terms but I know they're kind of like the universal terms. Um, I like to call Call myself a road mapper. So that means I have a general idea of what is going on. I'm very willing to take detours, I'm pit stops along the way. So even though I do like to plan, but I always end up diverting and exploring a different facet while I'm writing it. Question number three is concealer. Love revision or hate it? What's your revision process like generally? Um, Maybelline's Age Rewind a concealer? I really like this. This is like the first time I've used it. It's for dark circles. I don't get dark circles but I still use it anyway to just touch up the things on my face that I think should be kind of blended out. I will definitely be getting this one again. I just, this is the first time I've used it and I really like it. It's like, I don't know, I'm a little bit more than halfway done with it. Revision. I have a love-hate relationship with revision. I like it and I don't like it and I often find out that I do a lot of rewriting with revision. Like I feel almost more than necessary than an average writer would use with revision. So like does my outlining even help when I'm doing swaths of rewriting and during my revision phase? I've just like really had to learn how to revise and that has been like the most difficult part for me as a writer. The more I let go of having to rewrite a, a lot is uh, discovery and becoming a better writer from it. I'm definitely more of a drafter. I love drafting. And also I was thinking about like why do I love drafting so much and not having to revise and even though I know revising is super super necessary and I think the reason is because I used to do online role playing a lot in high school and in college and if you don't know what that is it's like a collaborative 
you go on forums and you create characters and you write with other people. That's like where I discovered like my absolute love for writing and storytelling is through those forums. It's very quick. So you write, you post, you have these people you're in threads with and plots with and it's just very fast and you really don't have time to go back and revise it properly and you know dissect it and rewrite it. You just like kind of write it and post. That's like the culture, the fandom that I'm like from so that's like what I'm used to and I think it's very similar to fan fiction. Even though I don't feel like I exclusively wrote fan fiction I still was very used to online writing. There's a definitely a sense of immediacy with both those kind of cultures that, I don't know, it just prevented me from like really falling in love with revision. Question number four is powder endings. Do you write chronologically or start at the end? Do you know your ending when you start? Or do you prefer happy endings or bittersweet? For the product, I use two powders. I don't know if that's very necessary, but I do it anyway. They're both from Maybelline. So I've been using a lot more drugstore recently. I don't know if that's just because I don't want to spend my money on it really expensive shit anymore, but I do do I do go to Sephora a lot and I buy a lot and you'll see them later on like my eyes I am very specific about needing higher quality shit on my eyes than I do like on my face I mostly bought them both because I didn't know which one to take so I bought both and I just end up using both they are for some reason different I use both of these I think one is like a setting powder and one is kind of like the matte so I use the matte first and then I use the setting powder at the end. What was the question? I already forget. Powder endings. So I often have a general emotion of how I want the story to end, but I never really know what the end scene is until like I'm in act three and I'm like, okay, where are we heading towards here? Um, but I do try to have like a general feeling, emotion, um, especially where the character arcs is where they kind of need to be, what they change, how they've changed at the end of the story. But I don't really know final scenes. Um, that kind of is the discovery of writing for me. I also write chronologically. I can't not um, because I'm really following the, again, the emotional journey of, this, of the character. And for me, um, it's hard for me to figure out what is my character going to be feeling like in chapter 15 while I'm writing chapter 7. So I'm definitely someone who needs to follow that emotional journey of the character. I wish I could write out of order and I don't know if I ever would. Well, right now I'm revising Pair of Prides. I'm getting to the port point where two of the characters are splitting and they're both going on completely different journeys. And I thought about recently kind of going through and following one character through chronologically and then doing the other character right now chronologically after I finish the other one. So that's kind of writing out of order, but not really since those two characters aren't going to be interacting at all until Act 3 again. So I'm thinking about doing that. And I think that will help me spend the most adequate amount of time with those characters and not lose the immediacy and the connection I have with them if I'm constantly switching back and forth between them. So I don't know, I'll probably talk about that a lot more in a future writing vlog. So I'm going to skip around in the questions a little bit because I like to work my way in. And so I'm going to go, to, I'm going to skip to contour, which is the bronzer. Tell us about the dark parts of your book. Who is your villain antagonist? What dark, creepy, tough things do you, your characters have to face? Um, okay, so we'll just jump right in here. I do have like a general antagonist, but if we're going to like kind of strip it back a little bit further, one of my POVs, the boy, is actually an antagonist to one of the other characters. So that's been really fun. I love villain romances. I'm like, such a hoe for that. This whole weekend, the weekend that I'm filming this, I watched Bread Eye, which is like my favorite thriller. And it's where I can definitely pinpoint my love for um, villain love interests. Even though they weren't love interests in that book, I felt the chemistry and the connection there. So I'll go down with that ship. Um, but also Buffy and Spike too, even though that one's like really unhealthy, toxic, and pro problematic. <laughs> um, you see where I'm coming from here. So for my contour, this is the same product that I used the last time I did this video. It's the Sephora brand. I got the Sephora brush and I don't go heavy on contouring at all. I'm just scared that I'll just have like a muddy face. So I do like a three kind of. I've been mostly just doing like a C. I haven't been doing much more than that. I just like really don't like bronzer, but I put it on because I feel like it is necessary, I guess. What my characters are facing, they're all kind of facing different things. Um, one has having a really hard time accepting who they are as a person. Another one is having to deal with grief, which is something that I feel like I'm trying to work through on my own through this character uh, because I don't know how to deal with grief at all. And it's been 
a couple years since someone, um, sorry, <laughs> um, close to me has passed and I've had a really difficult time unpacking that. Sorry, I'm not one of those people that cry on YouTube, but, um, I have a character going through something similar and it's just like really difficult for me to really go there. Just because me as a person, it's hard for me to understand. So there's that. And then of course identity. Identity is a theme. I feel like that's in all my books. Um, it's something I really struggled as a teenager it was my identity and where I was and how those kind of things coincided with who I was as a person. That's always going to be theme in all my books. So get ready. Um, identity is a huge thing for me. It's uh, why I love to write young adult because I didn't really have that as a teenager, finding books that had me in them, I guess, in a broader sense. Um, so I love exploring identity and how we uh, come to terms with it. Okay, now I got a blend, which I've always talked about is the most important thing in any beauty reg regimen. You got to blend because if you don't, it it's not good. You can't really tell that I even put on bronzer, but I don't know. I still do it. Question number 10 is blush. Who are you most scared to share your work with? I don't use blush. I never have. I just think I'm too pale to pull it off. Um, but my parents. It's always going to be my parents. Um, both sets. My my mom and my stepdad. My dad and my stepmom. I like don't want them to read my stuff. None of my parents have ever read any recent work. I feel like I might have shared some things when I was in college, but definitely not anything that I've been writing within the past like three or four years. The last part of the face is the highlighter. Um, favorite type of scene to write. I love tension. I love banter. Those are my favorite things to watch. So I definitely do that all the time in um, my books. For highlighter, I'm going to use a Sephora brand again, and I'm not going to use the right brush. So don't judge me, but I just couldn't find the brush I was looking for when I sat down to do this. Um, Sephora, again, I don't even know if this is my right color. They said it was my color when I went into the store and got it, but I'm not convinced. Can you even see that? I don't know. Sometimes I don't know about these this stuff. I'm probably also just like using the wrong brush to really highlight the highlight. But dialogue is my favorite thing to write too. I think that is where I do really well in, even though my critique partners tell me I'm really good at description. And I never felt like I was. <laughs> so I think in my fear of writing description, it comes out better than I think it does. So I don't know. Okay, now we're going to go back to eyebrows. Um, titles. Do you come up with them before you start, during, after? Is titling important to you or no? I used to always think that they were really important. Like Sharp Hollow's Pair Prize, those are the ones you guys are most familiar with. However, if I ever come up with like a better title, I'm fine with switching it. For Crow Family, which is one of the projects that I'm currently drafting, does not have a title yet. I don't know if I will come up with a title before I finish drafting or not. I just don't know. Um, for Pair Prides, I have a funny story about how I ended up with that title. I think I was writing Act 3 and I didn't have a title at that point. I think I was just going to keep calling it Witch Pirates until I found a better title. And then I was at Target. I was walking by and on the end cap was men's underwear. The brand was called Pair of Thieves and I thought oh, that'd be such a cool name for a book. And then I was walking further down the aisle and I'm like how can I incorporate that into my pirate book? So I'm like mm, Pair of Prides because the pirate ship that they are on is called the Vile Pride. So they shorten it to the Pride. And then their best friends, pairs. Pairs are kind of important in the story I've come to realize. So I just thought pair of prides, that sounds good. So thanks to men's underwear, did I come up with the title for a pair of prides? But again, I'm always willing to change titles if they need to. Also with eyebrows, I feel like mine never look as sickening as, um, the stuff you see on Instagram and stuff and the beauty gurus but you know I just try to make it look filled in with a little bit of an extension at the end and that's just how I do my eyebrows my camera overheated I just finished my eyebrows while I let it cool down so let's move on um, to my favorite part I guess is the eyeshadow eyeshadow eyeliner mascara those are all my favorite things my favorite thing about makeup is the eyes I guess question number six is eyeshadow some people go monochromatic and some people blend you should always blend FYI 
<laughs> do you love big or small casts and what's your favorite character development hack this has been my favorite eyeshadow i've ever used i've been using it since december stila shimmer liquid eyeliners i'm telling you it's so easy and it looks so good um i don't use a brush you have to use your finger for it but the key is to pat not smear this is typically all i use i do use a little bit of a powder eyeshadows for um my brow bone and then under my eye but we'll get to that later big or small cast so i do really like big casts in books uh they're my favorite i always have to f balance <laughs> because i am someone who falls into character soup very often and if you don't know what character soup is it's basically when you have too many characters and they get lost and the reader doesn't care about them and it's just too many people to name and to choreograph a scene and everything like that so i love big casts i love multiple pov but it's so hard to do those especially as a writer for sharp hollows it was a multi pov story it had four povs and then when i decided to rewrite the whole thing i went down to one pov and then for pair prize i was like it's like i didn't learn my lesson but i did i'm trying to combat that i guess I have three POVs and I still do have three POVs. I feel like they're all three very necessary to the story. And my mentor for Author Match Match also liked all three of them. So thankfully, I'm keeping all three. <laughs> character development hack. Well, for one thing, I always know that when I write these characters, I'm really, especially when I'm first drafting them, I am always discovering them for the first time. Um while I'm drafting them. So everything that I think I know about them, they all surprise me while I'm drafting them. They're never the what I originally thought they were going to be. So I think a hack is knowing that. <laughs> I think discovering characters while you're drafting, it allows them to lead you. It is the most organic, it's the most natural while you're drafting. Letting the characters tell you the story, basically. Um, another hack I feel like Make sure your characters are always actively making decisions that drastically change the story. I often make sure all my characters are making decisions at the end of each act and that completely change the direction of the story, whether those are good decisions or bad decisions, and how they deal with them. Kind of went high up on the side, so next I'm just going to be blending them out quick. First I need to uh, wash my hands. Next I'm just taking just a regular brush and I'm taking the whitest color on, in this palette and I'm just applying it to the brow bone and kind of bringing it down just to blend out the harshness of the line of the uh, color I'm using here. Good enough. Last thing I'm doing is I'm just adding um, some black to my lash line on the bottom. Eyeliner. Eyeliner is my favorite, but it's the most difficult. <laughs> um, but I always get compliments on it, so I'm doing something right. What's the hardest thing for you to write? Perfect, because this is the hardest thing to do. Uh, first, uh, the product that I use is what I always use. It's like my Holy Grail eyeliner. I love it. I also use liquid eyeliner, um, and that is um, and that is Stila's All Day Waterproof Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. It works. What hardest thing to write? The entire thing, basically. <laughs> I really shouldn't be talking while I do eyeliner. I almost feel like the plot is the hardest thing. And that's mostly just because it's threading everything together, making sure everything makes sense, and to keep the reader engaged. I think plot is the hardest thing for me, for sure. I'm not gonna talk while I do this because I will mess it up. There's one eye. I can never recreate it on the other side the same way. And I don't really like how the tail looks on the other side, but this is just a video. I got nowhere else to be today. Okay. We're gonna call that a day. Uh, mascara. I love mascara. Do you write long or short? What's your typical first draft word count? I am definitely an overwriter. I've always said that in the past. I wish I wasn't. I wish I could underwrite, but for some reason I just can't. My first drafts tend to be 90,000 plus words. Um, but I'm hoping for Cruel Family that I can get it between 70 to 80 for my first draft, and I think I can do that. I guess, I don't know, we'll see. And I brought like several mascaras. Mascaras are my favorite to buy because I love testing them out and finding new ones. I'm still going to consider Lancome's Defensils as the Holy Grail mascara. It's the best. I love it. And I actually, 
it feels light so I'm wondering if I should have thrown this away already I don't know if there's really any mascara left on this one um, I just kind of finished using this one I'm like scraping the bottom of the barrel for this one for like the past week I just like have not gone to Sephora to buy something new this is benefits bad girl when I'm running out of mascara <laughs> I do have a drugstore one that's like always in my makeup bag that I'll use and that's going to be L'Oreal's um, Carbon Black Vol Voluminous, 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 I can pronounce things. So I'm actually going to use this one because I like haven't used it in a while and I wonder what it looks like. <laughs> Mascara is definitely like my favorite part. I just love, maybe it's because like my eyes are my favorite feature of my face that I love to like play up my eyelashes. Oh hey, this one's not bad. I think I'm going to use this all of this week. Dang, that's pretty good for a drugstore. Okay, you know, I don't know if it's just because I'm like in front of a window, but I'm thinking this looks pretty good. And the last question is my least favorite. I don't know why, I just like know lipstick is necessary, but I hate having to shop for lipstick. So I always like get one and that's the one I'll use for the rest of my life. So lipstick is, I'm sure it's probably like a romance question. Writing kissing scenes, love or hate, how do you tackle them? Um, my holy grail lipstick, and it has been for over a year, almost over a year, because I have a story, is, um, is this L'Oreal? Yeah, it's L'Oreal's Varnished Rosewood? Varnished? Varnished Rosewood. It is so pretty, I love it, and the reason why I discovered it, I love Blake Lively, and she's like the spokesperson for <laughs> L'Oreal. Um, basically, uh, y'all remember what she wore to the Met Gala last year, it was like, absolutely stunning. I was reading about her whole makeup look because L'Oreal did it obviously because she's a spokesperson for it and they said like her lipstick was varnished rosewood from L'Oreal for eight bucks and <laughs> my ass went out to Target the very next day and I bought it. Um, so it's like definitely like that scene in Mean Girls when that one girl was like I saw she was wearing army pants and flip-flops, so I went out and bought army pants and flip-flops. And I, like, didn't even care. I'm like, it's probably not gonna look good on me either, because, I mean, fucking Blake Lively, and then there's, like, me, an actual Iowa potato. But, you know what? I actually like it. It looks... It's good everyday color. It gives me enough color on my face. I never do, like, blues or blacks or greens or anything like that, like, purples. I don't think I can pull those colors off. So I'm always, like, kind of looking for, like, the nudie brown like brownie reds those are kind of like the colors I gravitate towards that's what I use that's the story behind it what's the question kissing scenes how do you tackle them I read somewhere I forget where that's like to build tension in really good kissing scenes you want to make it an action and then like two thoughts the characters like inner thoughts and then you do another action and that like helps build the tension of the scene I've heard of that, I forget where, and actually I don't know if that's the real advice, but that's the advice I follow. And I feel like that's a writing kissing scene hack, maybe? I don't know if I do that all the time, but I do keep that in mind when I'm writing kind of steamy scenes. Okay, should I, I guess, I didn't really do my hair, so I don't really know what it looks like. But <laughs> that's it for the writing and makeup tag. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I feel like it was a fun kind of sit down type of video talking about writing processes and everything like that also makeup if you guys are new here my name is Lainey and I make videos on books and writing and if that interests you you guys should definitely subscribe down below hope I see you guys very soon and I hope you guys have a really great day bye we can go back we can go to the other